Namaste. Hi. So for the day, let's have a short practice on deck bending. So this includes the preparatory techniques and drills I do. I do this myself, leading to annealing back bend called Ostrasana. All right, so we start lying on our tummies, yeah. belly on the floor, yeah. extending that leg closest to me to the side, and the other one long behind us, and extending the side trunk too. Right, and let the head fall to the side. And then for a moment, relax. And then just allow a moment of yeah, ease, a softness, and letting go to happen. When we're lying flat on our tummies, the breath can easily flow through our respiratory system. So let's increase the potential of the breath here as we inspire the breath in. Yeah. Feel the breath from the nostrils cascading down to the lungs, and even the bottom part of the body, the hips and the low back. And as you exhale, let your body go heavy, relax like your muscles and the bones separate. All right, so keeping your body relaxed there, so just bending that extended leg and then circle around the knee joint. If you want to experience and feel pops and clicks there, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, so we're working already the sockets of the hips, so, so the spine can move freely out of those commonly tight pockets. All right, and you can wave the leg from hip to hip. Um, and then you can swim that leg to the back and towards the you know, yeah, hips and circle again. I can extend the shoulder too. All right. And then settle with the knee bent. You may use the other arm to cushion and support the head. And then allow your foot to circle around. You see. Yeah. Ustrasana, the knee and back bend we're going to be practicing towards the finish is the sum of all its parts. No, it's not just one technique. The body would have to prepare you know, all components of the position, even the tinier ones. And this includes the ankles, the toes, the knees, the hips, and the shoulders. All right, and from there, you know, we're going to open that arm out to the side and then using that bent knee to support you on your way to a flipping chest stretch. All right, so lifting that shoulder off the ground and then moving the chest forward away from you know, the collarbone there. You may rub the head from side to side and then just settle once you feel you know, the stretch happens. But it's not a burning stretch. It's uh, yeah, a deep stretch and uh, no pain at all. Yeah? Okay, and from there, yeah, you can use the arm to bind or just place a hand yeah, close to your leg. You can also kneel both sides of your hips. Right? And reaching maybe to a bind behind you. Otherwise, yeah, keep your level your light, yeah? You can allow the head to fall lightly down, calculated pressure, and this opens the chest already. You can lightly lift your body so you can move your side trunk and towards the feet, and then fall another breath or two. Deep shoulder stretch. All right, from there, come back. Yeah, use your hand, extending that arm forward. Okay, now, that arm, which you are flipping over onto the first time, cross it under. All right, and here we're stretching the tricep. So move the body forward and then bending that knee closest to me again. Two ways of doing this. You can use the forearms to stretch the shoulder blade and the tricep away from the upper back. Or you can close that fist. You are rotating that elbow and then move your head over the bone of your fist and then scoop the chin under. Right. And then the other arm may go under 
your help. Yeah. But this one could be intense for you. Yeah, just keep the arm out to the side. And then with the wrist there, you can add some neck component here, stretching the neck, stretching the tricep, and the back of the shoulders. Or you can just let the head fall on the side. Okay, you free your body, yeah, untangle, open, yeah, belly on the ground, or lower back on the ground, and you can reach those arms high over the head, and then folding the knees, and then moving them to a bit of a sway, side to side, and here you're stretching already, yeah, the side trunk, and then let's do a bit of this, the knee to chest swinging. You can lightly peel that shoulder off the ground. So lifting and stretching. Lifting the head periodically if you feel like the need to massage your shoulder. You can even circle one leg a few times. Yeah. Before you change. Uh, feels good. This is my favorite stretch. All right, from there. All right, you might find yourself moving away from your mat. So just go back. All right, crossing your legs at the ankle, sitting up and down. You move the body. Okay, now one leg forward, the other one to the side. You can reach that arm over the head, or you can just keep the leg out to the side. Yeah? Okay, now what happens with that other leg? Lift that leg up and then moving it up and down. Yeah, you can circle that hip around. Uh, one of the challenges of back bending, yeah, especially when the hips are heavy, you compensate by kneeling at the knees, yeah, and, and then the lower back suffers. So by doing this, we open the hips so we can keep the hips upright later on. Okay. Okay, and then you can even if your your flexibility permits. You can reach that arm over the head in a looping motion. Okay. Always assess this leg. All right, and then change. Yeah, up and down, circle around. If you're not ready with the bind, just reach that arm past your head. All right, and back to the middle. Feels good, that one. And up and down. <laughs> Rock in motion. Okay, now only if you're light, bring this up to your sitting. And then from the sitting position, yeah, kneeling. And then from the kneeling, down facing dog. All right, so let's do alternate leg lift. Uh, you can lightly... Yeah, lift that corresponding hand and adjust that hand slightly forward and then give that leg a light kick. All right. All right. Feels you can gain access to your hip flexor. Yeah. Which normally yeah, remain tight. And by working those inner pockets of the hips connected to the low back and in the inner linings of the belly, connected to the hips we can already open yeah our spine downward dog know this our spine has opened all right and then down to the knee and then marching in place all right so let me angle all right you can rub the shoulders around and swinging side to side all right keep going uh, you can even do a bit, a few of this uh, as you're working the side trunk. Okay, right. let's try our first. Yeah. Breathing in, arms left, keep the hips upright, hugging the legs to the midline, exhaling. All right, hands to the chest. Yeah. As you inhale, your arm bones move forward, upwards, and fall downwards. All right, inhaling, and then here the neck is part of your spine, so you may use the hand to rub the neck and the chest away from yeah, the bones in the joints there. You can give your shoulders yeah, some circling and then swinging. Inhale, 
exhale, inhale, exhale, so see, yeah, I'm doing a, a coordinated motion, inhaling, exhaling, loosen, inhale, upwards, exhale, all right, and then you will feel it, the chest is open, it can suspend all the way to the back, and in here, very important, you don't allow your tail to scoop to under, so a good technique you can do is to walk your knees to the midline at the same time, move your chest forward, upwards, and backwards, okay? And then you can settle with the hands resting on the bony part of the heel, or you can you know, go a little bit deeper. You can use one hand to rub the neck away from the chest. I would normally just you know, you know, do the hand there, neck, and then come back, or, and then settle. Or, or keep your hands to your heels. All right, pull inwards, 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 and then upright, closing the hips a bit, so you can walk the knees in place. All right, and then you can do a bit of this, uh, because after the back bend, yeah, you know, it's inevitable that the side trunk yeah, crunches a bit, and by doing this, you free those blockages. All right, and then back to the floor, where we were, in downward facing dog. All right, lifting the alternate leg lift. Okay, you can flow actually, if um, if you want to do and break the cycle, why not? It's all right. Yeah. Okay, and then back to the floor. All right, so let me go so you can see. All right, bending again that leg to the side. That's the opposite side now. Extending the other one. And settle for a moment while you circle that knee joint around. Right, this part of me is my looser side. So I'd like to move this. Yeah, for the outside, yeah, my joints. And then just allow that leg to circle around. And kicking side to side. And a moment of settling. All right. Good, so that arm opens, pressing this arm, flipping over, lift. If you have like a blanket, yeah, let me share with you a technique. If you have a blanket and then just fold it so you have this elevation, bring that shoulder past, yeah, so you have this space to work around some adjustment, so you're not pressing against, and the sensitive joints there. Rather, you have this face. Okay, you can kneel and then bouncing side to side there. Or you can do the arm binding. All right, come back. All right. You can use that elevation, crossing that arm under, bending the knee again, either chin to your shoulder, or folding that arm, go past for a deep tricep and neck stretching too. Or you can just fold the head to the side. Mm. Or the forehead. Depending on how your neck, your shoulder, and the hips feel. Mm. 
Mm, all right. And release. Yeah, open wide apart. Okay, inside the side those hips. We're falling and swinging. Yeah, reaching and extending. Okay, and let's do the side stretch once more. Yeah. And kick that leg up and down. You can even bounce the tip. And then changing sides. Yes, <laughs> mobility really. Yeah. The more openness you create inside, yeah, the lines and the creases of the hips and the shoulders and the discs of your spine. Yeah, it can open without <laughs> Yeah, the rigidity and the pressure. Okay, you can go up and down. Okay, and then sitting from the sitting to the downward facing dog and then alternate the leg lift again. I'm actually progressing this practice to my deeper back bends. I might just continue talking. <laughs> you can join me all the way to the finish of my practice. Okay. Okay, kneeling. Shrasana number two. Right. So I'm not a proponent of tucking the toes. I'd rather use a block. All right, so hold on there. I have a block here, a pair of blocks. Okay. Instead of tucking your toes, if you're not able to reach for your heels, use the block yeah, to assist you. Instead of tucking, because if you tuck your toes, your buttocks will contract, your hamstrings will contract too much. Yeah, so by working with a block, yeah, you can easily you know, walk everything to the midline. Yeah. Uh, you can even rest your hands. And one more thing, yeah, when you're using the block or you're grabbing a, a hold of your heel, your arms are rolled out. Yeah. Such as this. Yeah. So your arm bones can open. Yeah. yeah you can lightly move back, forward and back. Inhale. Draw in, up and back. Release, forward, up, and back. Release, forward, up, and back. Release, inward, inward. Yeah, armpits forward, up and backwards. And reaching for the back bend. How's the neck feeling? Yeah, rubbing the neck from ear to ear, collarbone to collarbone. I can even suspend like this to test your strength. Oh, this hip of mine is so loose, I always need to adjust it. All right, you can settle one more round. If you're too open already, reaching for the heels may even restrict you. So you can place your hand right up here or here, like the Lagu Vajrasana preparation. All right, why not? Yeah. Breathing in, you know, push down, open the spot away from the neck and the neck away from the chest. You know, Udi and Abanda pull inwards. Yeah. And you're using the hands yeah, to keep your body supported as you place your head down the ground. Breathe. All right. Inhaling. Strong 
as the entry, rise up. <laughs> okay, walking the knees to the middle. <laughs> yeah, you can move side to side there. All right, and moving up and down to decompress and flow your time. Right. Alternate leg lift. Yeah, I normally do alternate leg lift after a back bend so I can shake whatever heaviness, blockages lingering there from the kneeling. Okay, body over the shoulders. If you're flowing, otherwise, just kneel to the floor. Yeah? Beautiful. And a downward facing dog. Okay. So you can redo another one, or you can just relax in the Shavasana. Right, but I'll continue. All the way to my deeper ones. Yeah? Yep. You may keep watching that to gain inspiration or two. In the back bend, you want your shoulder blades forward so you can move your side body higher. Yeah, you don't want to be contracting, otherwise your spine will tighten at the back. So moving everything that gets in the way, yeah, so you can lift higher and more open. Okay. Neck and shoulders. Okay, you may move back and forward. Forward, upwards, forward, upwards, forward, upwards. And then some lightness and you know, calmness. And then relaxing as you reach. Exhale, loose in a bit like you're hanging, but keep the body aware. Yeah. You may gain access to that low back by lightly shifting back, forward and up. Yeah, you can loosen these arms, you may lightly give him a light shake. Okay, even if you're able to see your Toes behind you already, don't be tempted, keep moving forward, upwards, and backwards. And then once there, yeah, you can let the elbows open because your shoulders are open already. And, and again, you sway side to side, then turn the arm bones externally, so like you're cupping the head, and then you're going to fall, but keep pressing down to your knees. The, the toes are there, your eyes can see them, don't rush, take a nourishing breath in, high a bit, and return, you can use your toes, yeah. and there we go, don't rush, okay, and one step, climb up a bit, you may move the neck, shoulders around, all right, I would normally walk my knees again back to the middle because my left hip is so loose. I don't want to slide it out to the side. Walking in the middle to my hips and my spine remain aligned. All right, and from there, yeah, grab externally and fall on the ground. First try. It's always the hard try. Breathe. All right, breathing in, loosen a bit. You may place your hands down so you can refine your alignment. Walking inward, walking inward. All right, nice and level up and return oh that's deep yeah kaputasana <laughs> it's always challenging even how many times i've practiced it already yeah it's still 
<laughs> one of the most challenging asana for me because I am not inherently that flexible. No. And I really worked it. For many years. Okay. Alternate leg lift. Okay, let me just adjust because my mat is running away. Okay. And after the Kapotasana, I do. One leg, asymmetrical one, which I find lighter and easier for me, but this is a position of strength because you're able, you have that grip yeah, as opposed to kapotasana. Yeah, you have to depend on the core strength. And this one, just a bit of like a grip towards the midline. Like their platform. So the hips are stronger here, actually. That's why I find this one lighter for me. Because I can use this leg yeah, to grip everything in. Yeah. Breathe. Also, yeah, you may be able now to grab externally uh, the side, on the side. You can lift that leg and the knee to reposition and slowly to the floor. Good. You're, you know, you're working strength because you bring your mat with you as you hug that leg back to the midline. Breathe. All right, pressing up. Maybe place your hands first. So to readjust. All right, nice and deep. Love the one. Up. And to your kneel again. Walking. <laughs> Moving, stretching, and rubbing around. Good. And after that asymmetrical, I go straight back to the Kapotasana. Yeah. That's my drill. Hug forward, neck. Core drawn in. Okay, loosen a bit once there. Yeah. You can go deeper by holding on to your around your ankle bone. External arms and to the floor. I find this grip lighter for my shoulders actually. All right, come up to your heel and then another one. All the way up and up all the way to upright, okay? Walk the knees in there, into the midline. Okay. And I'll flow once. Sometimes I would linger here. Yes, I can rub that leg away from my hip. And the other one. And to the back. Alternate leg lift. Just to lighten. 
and recover. Okay. Asymmetrical. Ekapada Kaputasana. You can move a little bit to prepare. Up in the air. Hug. Yeah. So you have that solid base of support. Back bend is really about strength. The stronger your support is, the stronger your foundation is, the breath can flow, you can relax. You're in control from the entry, the holding, the adjusting, all the way now to the final position. The breath is not compromised. You can breathe. You can even talk while doing it and breathing. And up, control. Not just the entry, not just the holding, but all the way to exiting the position. You're in control of the process. Right. Up and down. And Kapitasana again. Last. I'm using my tongue to really gain access to my Swadishtana. Sometimes I would like to point those fingertips before I reach for my heels. Recover the neck, yes, it's fine. And one more here. All right, I'll try to press yeah, so I can balance my hips. and open. Okay. Wow. Feels nice and deep. And walk him, adjust him. And flowing to the floor. Some adjustment. Down with dog. Alternate the leg left. That concludes my backman practice. Now, I'll do my hip openness. Yeah. 